Hello, hello, hello. Time for the November 2023 pickup video, and... Ah, yeah, let's get the big thing out of the way. We got a couple more figures. We got a couple more games. We even got... An actual... Book! Yeah, remember those things? But... No, we're getting that all out of the way for now, so we can focus on the big mama jama. Gonna open up the first good smile Max Factory thing I've gotten in a long time. New in the box, I've been waiting for this. Normally I don't get these little dinky Nenderoid things, but with Shovel Knight, I'm gonna make an exception because it's the perfect size for him. Yeah, let's do this. Is there any tape I have to undo? Nope, doesn't look like it! Got some pla- Got some plastic we gotta rip off. And here he is, his Boba Fett helmet looking ass! Uh, it really feels kind of flimsy like it's- Nah, no, nah, it doesn't feel like it's gonna pop off. Can't look up and down much, but we got good rotation. Uh, shoulders are kind of disappointing, just like the old days when I was growing up. Just up and down, no move side to side movement, it looks like. Do get some bicep swivel as words, and wrist swivel. Uh, uh, hands don't hinge or anything. This is kind of a bummer, but what are you gonna do? This. It's a Shovel Knight figure in just the right scale. Got a lot of movement in the... In the legs, though. Actually, the articulation kind of reminds me of... the old-school OG Ninja Turtles, except... twist at the waist. Come on, baby! Let's do the twist! And... Got some other... Okay, there's other arms we can use that sort of makes up for the lack of shoulder mobility. And we got a treasure chest we can fish stuff out of. Nice, cool accessory. And underneath here we got the shovel and a stand. Let me cut the video while I get all that taken out. Okay, basically how I think this works is you got several interchangeable arms for different types of movement, like at the shoulder, and then twist at the elbow. Or right here we have his elbows bent, and you can swivel there, and there, and a whole bunch of different interchangeable hands, and a different sculpted leg to simulate him jumping. I don't know if all Nenderoids like this, this is the first one I've got, other than the Kirby one long, long ago, and that, of course that thing was just vastly different. That was basically like a globe that you stick metallic limbs onto, magnetic limbs, so he could have his little stubby hands and feet going anywhere. But... And yeah, the... Ah, oh, really? And I lose a hand already. No, wait, 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 I got it, I got it. Yeah, this kind of wonky faux articulation at this price point... Is that... <sighs> nah. For now, this is the only Shovel Knight figure in scale that we got, but I do feel a little let down with the articulation. I knew I was gonna buy it no matter what, but still. Now I do feel a bit like a chump, but... Oh well. I've been waiting for a decent Shovel Knight figure to display on the shelf for a long, long time, and here he is. In fact, let's see how he scales with some of the other ones I got. Alright, so here we have Shovel Knight next to the uh, foreign scale Nelnet Mega Man, obviously the character that was the biggest inspiration for the Shovel Knight games. As you can see, they scale okay, though... I think Shovel Knights should be at least as tall as Mega Man. But, you see, this 5-inch scale 
Hopco Mario with limited articulation. I'm hanging on to this until I can score the movie versions for relatively cheap. He's a little taller than Shuffle Knight, which feels about right. Sonic should be... shouldn't be quite as tall as Shovel Knight, but overall, this skill works okay for your classic hop and bop and platformer heroes. This... this is good. This is good. I'm more upset about the uh, having different interchangeable arms for faux articulation with Shovel Knight, but this... this will do just fine. Alright, now that we've gone in depth with the man of the hour, let's move our attention over to the ladies. Starting with the character all the guys out there just love so much, Captain Marvel. They just adore her. They don't go all comics getting game in her game about this character at all. Yeah, I already had the earlier movie version of this, but I decided to go ahead and snag this one, because... Well, with the sash, it's a bit more comic accurate. Not to mention, I realized, after seeing this, how muted the original movie figures are. I mean, this dark navy blue, worse than DCEU Superman suit, and this brighter red. The colors on this one are just more vibrant. They just pop more. And, yeah, I, and I, I can live with the Karen haircut if I have to, or do a head swap if I must. Although this is probably a definitely a better face sculpt. And as for articulation, uh, we don't get the... like the double-jointed pinless elbows, or even pinless knees, but whatever. And I buy just loose out of that stupid five-pack for the X-Men 60th anniversary, that there was no way I was going to get, because I only wanted two of them in there. And this is one when we have Vertigo. People who played the Marvel DC Overpower game back in the 90s, they probably remember how much of a bitch it was to deal with the special card dealing with this character. Oh yeah, her and her fellow marauders. And But most people in, from the 90s probably remember her from the cartoon. But she's actually part of the Marauder, Sinister's original supervillain group, and here she is next to that custom arc light I got a year or so back, where paint's starting to peel already. It wasn't a very well done custom. I'm afraid to pose her anymore, but there she is with her partner in crime, Arc Light. Hopefully we get an official Marvel Legends Arclight, along with Blockbuster and Scalp Hunter. I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Now let's move on to the games. And what do we have here? Well, another Saturn game. I mean, I mean Master System game. And unlike most Master System games, this has some eye-catching art. Yep, good old R-Type. This was back when, even before the Sega Genesis, Sega did what Nintendo didn't. The NES never got an R-Type port, but the TurboGrafx-16 and the Master System sure did. And just take a look at this sucker. The cart and its label, pristine, as is the instruction booklet. Found this during my second Thanksgiving up in North Carolina. This time I was able to have more time to look at the good stuff in the good stores and for 40 bucks, I could not pass this up since it goes for 50 or more usually in this condition online. But speaking of online, I had stuff on Mercari and eBay I'm watching. And once I saw the price dip on this, I decided to go ahead and jump on it. I briefly played it, the free version on PC. Didn't get any of that super disturbing psychological horror stuff yet, but. I figured, go ahead and grab the physical copy, and it comes with some stuff. It comes, like, with this... This card... This, uh, this, this business card... These decals... More decals... Oh, floppy disks. Remember that shit? And, of course, we got the cart right there. 
So yeah, another little physical addition I can add to the shelf of a... Oh, oh, that's no good. Derp. Hurt the resale value on that. Now, oh. Didn't mean to put Vertigo back. Vertigo, come on, you're not supposed to be dizzy. You're supposed to make everyone else dizzy. Alright, what else did I get? Let's round this out. Oh yeah, a couple movies. I went to see this, because I realized I hadn't seen much original stuff in the theater this year. I did see Megan when it came out at the beginning of the year. I ended up getting that on digital, though, but at least I got a physical copy of this. Another reason I saw this is, hate me all you want, but Tim Story, I still have a soft spot for his Fantastic Four films. Not just when in comparison to the drudgery that was the 2015 one. I, I like the cast of the 2000s ones. Mostly did what they were supposed to do. It felt like, yeah, th this is Fantastic Four. But even though I did have other fanboyish complaints, don't get me wrong. And I saw, during October, I caught up on, like, monster movies that I had yet to see, like Creature from the Black Lagoon and Tremors. But a lot of people I heard talking about this one since a new one was coming out, and I realized I'd never seen this, so I wanted to go into Family Dollar for a few things. I saw this, and uh, I picked it up. It's the extended cut. So that should be a good time when I can when I'm feeling in the mood. And lastly, oh yeah, remember that book thing? Oh yeah, it's a book, but it's about a video game. This is basically the novelization of Eco. Last month, I showed off how I got the... the PS3 remaster along with Shadow of Colossus. So I decided to also get... the actual book. I don't know if the creator considers it canon, but... whatever. I mean, I've read plenty of Halo books. If I'm going to go back to some books based on games, go for something a little different.